Hello, everybody. Welcome to Felicitations Book Club. It's Felicia Day and the wondrous Bonnie Burton. Hello. Bonnie. What's going on, Bonnie? I have I, a lot um, of things to complain about today. So I need you to add some sunshine to the light to no. the world or complain about something no, equally no, no. annoying. I can be your I can be your sunshine. I just listened to that song the other day. I put it on a TikTok from Len. Remember? Oh, that so good. Ots. It's such aughts. a good ot song. Like what are, what are some iconic ot songs? That and Red Hot down, Chili Peppers. Yeah, but also I've been going down like Bikini Kill, like Riot Girl Zone. Uh -huh. um, okay. 90s music but then um like a lot of like old bjork and <laughs> like here's the thing like i i subscribe to every single nostalgia influencer on tiktok i love the hey if you were a kid in the 90s kind of mm -hmm. things or hey if you were a kid in the 80s or you're a gen x or if and i forgot a lot about, and i follow the goths because i will always follow the goths i don't care yeah. if you're if that's just part of your that's part of your DNA, Bonnie. You're yeah, a I don't care. You could be a bat baby that just discovered like dark wave, or you could be like my <laughs> age and be elder goth. I get it. I get it. So I like I'm it. I'm rediscovering old music I loved that I have CDs too, by the way. I still need to get mm -hmm. a CD player so I can listen to my giant CD collection. One day uh, they're gonna have CD players in hipster gift shops just like they have record players now i've been waiting for the walkman cassette player to come back because ironically they're really expensive to buy on ebay and stuff when ugh, they're old techs so i don't know i why. know but i like, bought a vc i bought i had to get two different vcrs off of amazon because i was trying to transfer all my vhs over to digital oh. and i bought a digital transfer machine that hooks up i need to one, do that well you can borrow mine because okay. i'm not going to use it after a couple of weeks you I know will, I, will rent it. I have all my uh you don't have to I rent have... anything you take it from well, me so yeah i still i still have a gift for your child it just keeps growing so by the time i see you in person it's gonna be like here's this giant stash of stuff that i've been hoarding for your kid for a while now <laughs> my mother but does also, the same thing I also have presents for you that I bought at like conventions where I'm like, oh my God, Felicia would love this. So I have like a, oh my God, Felicia would love this box of stuff. So I just need yeah. to like, uh, whenever, fine. whenever we do, but yeah, I've been, I've been listening. So I've been, and also it's not great when you are, um, kind of altering your dosage of ADHD, ADHD meds to, Ooh, that's rough. Try to be, try to be better focused. And then no. you go down a TikTok rabbit hole for five hours, and then you're like, "Wait, I was supposed to get stuff done today." So I'm, I'm trying to like use TikTok as like a dopamine thing and not a procrastination thing. So if I'm like kind of stressed out, I'll wa I'll I have a timer now. So I have a TikTok timer. That's your sad. Pomodoro. Your Pomodoro planning your TikTok. <laughs> and let me tell you, this TikTok timer idea, and I don't even know if I got it on TikTok. Probably, uh, is great. Because then I'm like, oh, it's been an hour. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Now I can get other stuff done. Or else I will just be swipe, 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 heart, heart, No, heart. it's very bad. That's why I have been very negligent the last couple of weeks because I've just been so freaking busy. And I feel yeah, like I need... What have you been need... up to? What have you been... you I know, saw your clips. Your clips stuff was cool. I did. I went to Austin and to celebrate and attend the kickoff book tour for uh, Bridge uh, Under Bat City. or yeah. the... And it was really cool. The Ernie Klein. I think I screwed up the name. I've had a morning and I want to tell you about it, but okay. uh, it, it was wonderful to see Ernie. He had his DeLorean there. There were so many fans. It was just really great. Ernie, Ernie and his DeLorean. So I met Ernie when he was the screenwriter of Fanboys and I was still working. The Bridge to Bat City. That's it. Why did I even say under? It's not under. It's it. I've just, <laughs> we'll get to I, it. I, uh, I met him when I worked at Lucasfilm still and I was the liaison between um, Lucasfilm and uh fanboys because they filmed oh, cool. at, they filmed at skywalker ranch which no one's allowed to do ever i think the only other people that did it were like country music stars and then architectural digest or something so it was oh, like, wow that's I think so brad cool though pa yeah like brad paisley shot a music video there that was about geekdom and then um i think dixie chicks i'm not sure or dixie or chicks whatever we're calling them is is, um, is george and is george into country music is that what i don't know how it happened because george has to approve it but i think I don't know how it happened, but anyway, uh, they shot fanboys that there's a scene where they break into Skywalker ranch in the van. Like that's the point of the movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See yeah. Phantom Menace because they're, their best friends dying of cancer and they don't know if he'll 
survive before the movie comes out because they think it's going to be this great movie. It's a great, it's a great film. I highly recommend Fanboys. Great cast. It's very funny. Great, great but movie. Yeah. I was supposed to be like their person, the person that was in charge to make sure they didn't just run all over the ranch like crazy and go up to George's office. And of course I was like, yeah, let's go up to George's office. Like I was the worst person I know. Here's the thing. Funny. I'm not going to let them steal anything. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It's but, fine. But they're already got approval to be there. And I ended it's up being. fine. Because I already Limps. dressed. Well, I already dressed goth like Kristen Bell in the movie. So they like, because it's from the 90s goth. forgot like, Kristen was, Bell was in that. God. Yeah, she's like their best friend. I know, girl. I know. I just, it's but been so long since like, I saw it. She dresses like I did in the 90s, but also how I, I was still dressing. So I already mm -hmm. dressed like her normally on a weekend because we shot on a weekend uh when no one was there and i was they were like yeah can you just be the stand-in because you already are dressed like her <laughs> i didn't Amazing. know that she was gonna look like that because the movie we did't we didn't know they were shooting it so yeah you didn't know uh, that's amazing I so i got to be a i got to be a stand-in for kristen bell and get in the movie credits but i love ernie klein because he wrote the screenplay for it and i got to meet him and he's such a cool dude and he's such a like he's really genuinely a wonderful he person is, like genuinely loves nerdy shit and he's uh a genuinely good author but also he's just a fun yeah. dude the rich about city is very touching it's a, it's oh. like not it's not what you'd expect from him but like the writing uh. quality is definitely what you'd expect I love that. And I love that you're part of the, the whole thing. So congrats. That's great. Yes. Yeah, so I did that. I've just been so busy and I don't know. And I have to go out of town to work next week. So I, it's been, I've been so sporadic and I have not updated felicitations. I'm so sorry if you're listening to this, okay. if I ever get around to uploading it, I am just in podcast jail. But at the end of the day, you know, I am doing the work I need to do. I've been updating my newsletter at least semi-consistently because I do enjoy writing it a lot. But we'll get back to it, you guys. And Tom Blank and I were working on a project. We haven't done undressing. So, sorry, Bonnie. What? I'm sorry, what? We were we have our undressing podcast, which we haven't know, done I in like that. two months. I know. Well, the Witcher. Witcher podcast, too. We still haven't finished The Witcher. And Bridgerton is about to come out. Listen. I, there's only so much I could do. Now what, I have a 3D. Wait, wait, I do have a, a 3D printer that I've been doing. I did like two hours of YouTube tutorials over over the weekend to feel a little bit more competent. I'm really into it. I have a whooper that I'm going to print today. Super excited about it. Wait, 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 wait. What are you printing today? I'm gonna, it's a whooper. It's a po it's a it's 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 a Pokemon. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Honey, oh, come on. It's I a don't Pokemon. collect them all. I haven't collected. I still have friends playing Pokemon Go, like when I was at WonderCon. I, I do too. Uh, my friend Stephanie still plays it. And we were at dinner and Stephanie's like, oh, I'm just going to. I'm like, you're still playing that? The funny thing is, though, by the way, that sounded like judgy. I was not jaded. Judgy. I was just That's impressed. Fine. It's I fine. was impressed because I have the uh, memory and attention span of a goldfish. So the fact that she's still playing it all these years. But I do remember there were uh, there was some controversy of that because some of the most rare Pokemon you could collect on Pokemon Go were like in the uh, San Quentin prisoner section for kids. Which what? I thought, oh, but also I thought that was kind of sweet because like kids visiting their parents at San Quentin give them something special, right? Because they've had a tough childhood. It is. But I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then there was ones like in the in the Scientology building. There's a ton. So then I was like, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute!" Okay, this that well, like they probably pay. They, I mean, who knows? Do you do they pay to have the? I don't know. I'm oh, not gonna. That's I don't know the one. rules. Ooh. I do play it. It's what kind of got my kid into Pokemon, and we play every day together. We get at least the gifts, and we cut um, and we send them. We we collect them, and if they're under two stars, we send them to the grinder and make hamburger out of them, so we can yeah, we get their candy. What? Yeah, it's really funny. You're murdering Pokemon for candy? Yeah. So I, I, am, I approve. I approve. Okay, so before we get into our book, I need to talk about what happened this morning. It's a Monday, and I decided to do all the things that I've been avoiding doing for weeks, which cumulatively is the worst experience of my life. So okay. I went to the P.O. box and had uh -oh. to renew my P.O. box, but then I had to show EID numbers for all the companies and other P and ID color. So I had to go gather all that. And then I sent some documentation off to be to the State Department to get certified so I could send it to for my Polish citizenship thing, which has literally been six months on my desk. And I was like, Felicia, just do this. I deposited a handful of checks that were under five dollars, all of them, and that's why they just sat on my desk and I didn't eat those residuals. Them. Are those residual checks? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
And then I got in the mail uh-huh. a notice that I had a moving violation. Now, on February 15th, the day after Valentine's Day, I was pulled over by a cop. Because I guess I, I was looking down at my phone at a stoplight. Put it down because I never touch my phone when I'm moving the car. She pulled me over for that because I don't have a hands-free unit. Okay? What neighborhood, what neighborhood was this? I'm just curious. Uh, what it was what like off La Brea. It was off La Brea. It was okay, like. Because in North Hollywood, in my hood, the only time cops will pull you over is if you're dragging a human body behind your car. It was a it was a trap because there were two cops just pulling people over one oh, after another no. and they were just handing out. Now this woman told me, "Hey, I'm just giving you a warning this time. Sign here." I'm like, "Okay, great." Turns out it was not a warning. She lied to me. It was a ticket. So now I had to spend $158 and another $67 to do traffic school, which is oh. going to take 6 hours online. And I'm really and why is she and why, why did she lie to me? Wow. She's like, I'm going to let you off with a warning this time. So wow. why would she lie? That's crazy. Well, I mean, I don't know for sure. I think, I know in San Francisco, they have quotas, right? So they have to pull over a certain amount of people, a certain amount of months, a time of the but month. But why so lie knew. to me? She was already getting me the ticket. I, I just assumed just I was like, getting the ticket. Me, maybe it's cop guilt. Maybe that's a thing now. I don't know. I don't know. She was real weird and real casual with me. Oh, I just don't. At least you didn't get understand. shot. At least you didn't get shot. I mean, it's. Well, all- I found the. T- See, I didn't even remember signing anything. And then I had mm-hmm. to get my insurance out to show the P.O. box that I. Let me just tell you, the government and state, it's just too much. Anyway, so I was like, oh, I have this thing I did sign. I guess I forgot it. So then I was going to contest it because I was like, I didn't sign anything. And good thing I found that because I would have looked like an idiot. So anyway, did you, contest I, it? did you go to trial? Did you contest it? Well, or no, no, because oh. <laughs> I, I mean, I was on my, I mean, I, I didn't know I wasn't moving. I was not reading the phone when I was moving. I was at the light and she yeah. pulled me over, yeah. but I did not have a hands-free unit. And that day I went home and I ordered a hand-free unit. I put it in my car and I have been really good about it. So I like okay. to think that, that, you know, the karma of the universe was like Felicia don't touch your phone while you're driving or you're going to get a car, car accident with your daughter. So that's, I'm like, okay. Yeah. But I just don't understand it. I mean. Why lie? You get, I would have been expecting a ticket. Like, I don't, anyway. Maybe she changed your mind. I, I don't know what the rules are about changing your mind as a cop with ticket, when tickets are concerned. I, I stopped driving, so I haven't driven a car or anything in since 2000. I know, I know. It's but it's you know, I have cool. different problems. I have the problem of oh, what what scary Lyft driver will I be getting today? <laughs> 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 Where let me tell you, sometimes it's uh, the cool. I'm a chatty Kathy. I love to uh, learn about people and their different backgrounds. And in LA, when you get a Lyft driver, it could be anyone from anywhere. And I've met a lot of actors, writers, directors. I met a great uh, journalist on the way home from Friends a couple days ago, um, who's just starting out in sports journalism. And she's she was so cool. like, she was so shiny and happy. And I didn't have the I, as a you know as a veteran of journalism for you know thirty years, yeah. I didn't have the I didn't want to be like good luck because you know AI is taking over that. So I was just like yeah, you, you go, you keep going. But then sometimes I get Lyft drivers where I'm like, mm, that's how I die. This is how I die. And it's usually someone who's never driven or doesn't know LA at all, or is staring at their phone for the map to change uh, because they're beholden to the GPS or uh, they don't, you know, I don't mind if they don't speak English because then I can like learn some stuff because I'm trying to learn a lot of different languages through Duolingo. I mean, God bless you. The idea that I get into a conversation with a stranger, like, is horrible to me. I don't need to know about more people in this world. I mean, I reserve any... New input of new other people, I reserve for my fans. Like, we're sure. obviously on the same page, okay? But nobody else. I don't need unsolicited strangers entering my life with their information. Well, I do, ask, I do ask first because I don't want to be a Karen about it. So I, a lot of times I'll be like, hey, uh, I'll, I'll ask, you know, is, is it okay if I practice Spanish or practice Russian? It's usually Spanish and Russian. And then I'm trying to learn Armenian. And then also every once in a while, there's someone with the language that I just want to hear because I think it's beautiful. So like, you know, like uh, uh, Swahili or something or, you Bonnie, know. I'm never taking a lift with you ever. Why? No. I don't, I, 
I hate, my mother used to talk to strangers all the time and there's oh. nothing makes my stomach curl than somebody engaging with a stranger in a Why? friendly way. Why? Well, I have to, like, I have to. Not, a, not a not friendly way, but an intimate way. Like, let's get to oh. know each other, stranger. Oh, well. I'm Always be friendly, of, but. I am the queen of overshare. So, like, I've, I've had, and especially when I was writing murder mystery games for Hunt a Killer, I had to have cab drivers at the end be like, I loved this. I learned a lot. There's this like little old guy that was like, this grandpa guy was like, I'm really, I learned a lot from how you write murder mysteries. But one pro tip, maybe don't tell the driver how they can get away with murder as they're driving you somewhere. <laughs> because Funny. you're basically, I basically like, I am building my true crime documentary as I go about me getting murdered by basically talking about how to murder someone yeah. and get away with it because I'm writing murder mysteries. And I was just like, oh yeah, that's good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. So maybe, All right, I should, Bonnie. maybe I should, but I've gotten great like book recommendations, podcast recommendations. I'm not saying it's a bad way to be like your life is probably more rich expanded for your interactions with other people. I just, I, I need walls no, up. You're, you're I need the sweet. mortar. The mortar has, no sound can pass through the mortar around the bricks around my I mean, life. Let's okay, just say you you collect Pokemon. I collect stalkers, so I I get it. I yeah. get it. It's okay. All right. Uh, anything else right. before we get into the book that we actually are going to talk about? Uh, I was gonna um, I was gonna say first of all, thank you for even having this book club because again, this gets me to read books I wouldn't normally read on my own. Uh. It's a great place to like, I, I need to be more involved in our uh, discord discussions because there's so many. Bonnie, great discussions happening. told you six months ago, never promise that again. This is what I you know. do all the time. Bonnie, I know. I'm going to be so Bonnie. No, you do it all the time, Bonnie. You're like, Sorry. I need to, I do it too. I'm doing it with the podcast, the felicitation podcast. I, it's fine. They, they I can mean, get, they, they, you know, I'm there. I, I read a lot. I, I you cannot I, I, promise they're, more they're, than they're you can give the world. Like, there are readers, our viewers are amazing, and they're their own little cool like coven uh, of cool people that are talking to each other. So they're that's wonderful. Fine. Just, but I, I part so every once in a while, I'll go in and I'll be like, "Oh, that's a great discussion." But it was like you know a month ago, and so I'm like, uh, "Do I just like say hey?" Funny. Great. <laughs> Yes, you could just jump oh, in. It's... If you want to respond, you jump in. I okay, think about well. this all the time in my Discord. I okay. lurk in my Discord. I read most of General. Fel but Felic Felicia Adventures, I'm always in. I read. Okay, the ones I read the most are video games, books, and um, sometimes I look at the parenting. But I can't check all of it. I'm overwhelmed all the time. And it really yeah. is. Well, you are. Because no, you're like but... a big-time celebrity. I'm, I'm just no. trying to... You know, no, it's not even that. It's just that uh -huh. I realize that I'm not an expand. I can't juggle everything I'm juggling all the time, and I, yeah. I'm always uh, doing things less good than I want them to be because I'm trying to spread myself too thin. And like on my Discord, I'm like, oh, I need to be participating in every single discussion. No, I don't because then it's a job and not genuinely pleasurable. And when I jump in and I read and I know everybody's, na you know, people's names, I can only do so much, and you can only do so much in honor of yourself, okay? So I'm telling you this because I need this advice all the time as well. Okay, good. Tough luck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Memes T3K Temple says, I only post in health and beauty. <laughs> anyway. I will say though, if any of you are on Reddit, I comment in the weirdest Reddit rabbit holes a lot. So if you occasionally see me on Reddit replying on like a, you know, like a, I don't know, a turtle cult or something or a- yeah. Uh, I don't know, some sort of like, uh, I was on a Muzak one for a while trying to figure out like if there was hidden music in certain songs. I love a conspiracy theory. That's also fun at 3 a.m. when you can't sleep. So if you see me, if you, and I and I comment on a lot of TikToks and I, I'm very social on social media as far as commenting on people's Instagrams and stuff. So if you see me, say hi. Uh, yeah, I do want to give a shout out to the mods who do probably check all the channels all the time. And like that's labor that is... I, I I treat them to meals whenever I'm there and yep. can pick them up or they get me drunk in some people's cases. But yeah, it is hard, you know, but at the same time, for me, I'd rather shrink my world a little bit and um, be not feel stressed out all the time and feel like I owe people all the time. Um, and when I'm able to regulate that and my attention and where I'm paying attention to, I, I feel like I'm 
doing it in such a joyful way where I don't feel guilty about it or resent it or feel like I'm less because I'm not doing more of it. I guess that's the thing that's hard about social media, you know, being online all the time. It's feel like, you know, you owe people your time, you know, then you're not owning yourself. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's no, it. I mean, I, I, hey, I'm a, I'm an elder uh, internet person. So like, I remember having live journal fatigue. Where I was like, I can't read everyone's journal all the freaking time. And oh my gosh, those no. are diaries. Those are like long entries. So I yeah. get it. I get it. Anyway, okay. So let's talk about our book. You're awesome. I absolve you of any guilt. Thank we you. read a book that we haven't read a kind of book like this in quite a while. I loved it. Loved it. So can you, do you have the cover? Do you have the I physical? don't. Okay, that's okay. You, um, I, I was a digital person on this one, so it's okay. It's okay. I don't, we don't have the cover, but it is very racy. Well, wait, and I, I, I posted the cover on Twitter. So let me just have the cover. I'll show you the cover. Oh yeah. The cover is very nice. The cover is, um, worthy of a, I, I feel like sometimes book covers, I wish that publishers and maybe they do. And I just don't know this, but I kind of wish that publishers would like print out some of these, uh, covers as posters because I would probably frame this i don't know if you can look at that it's very uh i don't understand what's yeah. splashing around them but if you read the dirty parts of this book you're going to get an idea yeah so it's by kimberly lemming and it's called uh that time i got drunk and saved a demon there yeah. is also a sequel called there's that many. time i got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf and then there's more so there's this... Bree's too brie her friend brie who's named after because she steals cheese they're like yeah. all her friends have different books. So it's, it's yeah, exactly. Different. Yeah, they're great. I'm going to read them all. I can't wait. So this is a classic vaginal fantasy book that we would have read in the day. And Sean Sandalucky, look, I think said that maybe they were going to read this book or they're planning on it anyway. Okay. So I will say that this is a uh, harkens back to another era in our book reading habits. And I, Bonnie, mm -hmm. I don't know about you. If you read books like this all the time, I do not. I primarily read lit RPG and, um, historical fiction and or nonfiction okay. nowadays i was a little shocked Were and i was embarrassed i was girls? i was like oh oh the the c word oh my goodness ooh, ooh, ooh. i mean here's the thing ooh. <laughs> i love this. the other c this. word oh 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 well i fo i follow around drag queens like uh, I'm their groupie, so that C work comes up a lot in drag queen humor. <laughs> so that's that's not that big of a deal. But, to me. I, but also, I don't I don't I mean, mind the you don't you don't hear the word like oh yeah you it's like kind of like affectionate almost, but you don't hear it as part of tied to the anatomy as yeah, much and I actions know. around said anatomy. Like actual actual literal yeah. I mean, I was in a band called Twat, so I can't be too like. <laughs> Did you you knew that? Long I almost ago. spit. Yeah, I was in an all girl, all girl punk band called Twat. We were bad. We were horrible. <laughs> we were not good. But we had great merch. We had great merch. Because we did like SWAT, like SWAT team. We had merch that looked like SWAT team. That's that pretty SWAT. great. That's SWAT pretty SWAT great. Team. Yeah, our merch. Let me tell you, I, I've been in a, a few bands uh, that never went anywhere, but our merch was totally great because I was the one designing. And you're very it. good at marketing, Bonnie. I'm good at marketing. I'm good at band names. And I'm good at like uh, merch that I would wear. It's basically shirts and mascots. I, and the other one was Bionic Kitty. And then I can't remember the other. That's band. a cool name too. I would have a. Yeah. I would definitely wear a Bionic Kitty shirt. Well, I don't our know if I could. Lasted longer than our bands. I could tell you that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, I would say this is definitely old school vaginal fantasy romance book club show book choice. This is something I would probably have chosen if we were still running the show. Mm -hmm. uh and and the show still exists guys there is a does, there is a group that by, run by sean sandal looky look one yeah. of my mods i want to give it a shout out yeah the you know i do Alive miss well. yeah i miss the community yeah. around that I mean, there were I, just... I, and here's the thing like we did that show for so long and it was such a fun show but it's so it's almost like a time capsule because we used Google Hangouts to do it and Google Hangouts doesn't exist anymore. But also the books that we the kind of books that we read are right now so popular. So I popular. feel like it's 10 years later and suddenly this is the genre to be well, in. So I mean, there you we go. Were, we were as usual, you and I head of the curve. Always ahead of the curve. Never Way getting the rewards. The Book booktube, bookstagram, book twitter did not exist yet. Uh, we were doing it. And by the way, whenever I, and I watch a lot of like podcasters 
and uh, book club people now that are Gen Zers, maybe some like younger millennials that I will send. They'll be like, oh, we're reading this book. And I'll send them a quick link going, oh, well, we covered it. And Vag fan, if you want to take a look at what we said, and all of them are like, oh, my God, I didn't know this existed. This is so cool. This is wait, what year was this? And it was so sweet because it's like, you yeah. know, a lot of people think, oh, uh, TikTok invented book talk. No, we've been insane with book no. talk. We've been doing it for a while. But I'm glad that especially as an author, and I think you can probably attest to this as an author as well. I'm just glad that the generations after us love actual books and love reading and love print books, not just mm-hmm. digital. So like, I'm happy that the kids are reading still and that they're reading great stuff because this is one of those books that I'm like, I kind of looked at what my favorite podcasters were talking about with this book. I didn't hear any negativity. Like everyone was really into this book and this book series. So if you liked this book, if you read it with us, or if you haven't read it yet, read it and then go and read the other ones because it was a delight. It was Mm -hmm. a delight. And it was smutty. There was some good smut. I thought really good smut. Yeah. I, I, but I have not been exposed to this kind of smut in, in years. So <laughs> I will say now the book besides the smut, which you, yeah. you can get more into, I mean, they got into it. They got into it. Um, I <laughs> will say that this is a really fun book in that it, it did feel a little bit fan fictiony, but in a good way. Yeah. And yeah. it felt like very contemporaneous references and attitude in a sort of Ren fair slash D and D kind of, environment which i was there for you know i mean it was a little anachronistic um but then i got really charmed by it uh-huh. and i was just like okay let's go man this is it this is the vibe i want to i want to stay on this i want to stay on here and i loved i love love the main character cinnamon was so awesome and i i almost was like oh her name's cinnamon and then her brother's name is coom and it's like oh i roll but then i'm like ah whatever i loved it it's farm. So it's kind of like they have to like have these names that are and nicknames that are akin to what they are, who they what they're what they do as a profession, where they come from. Like I get it. It's very Dickens in a way that your name represents what you are, who you are. And Star Wars too. I mean, let's face it, a lot of fantasy books are like that. But I and by, by the way, I'm a big fan of easy names to pronounce and remember. Because yeah, cinnamon. We've, read, we've read a lot of fantasy and sci-fi where I'm like, I'm never ever going to remember. Yeah, you can't it. say that loud. I don't even know how to pronounce it, let alone read it. And it's just too much. And my dyslexia will just not help me at all. So like, I, I, I appreciate names I can remember and why, <laughs> Yeah. but also we're, we've kind of read books in this genre in the sense of the adventurer who doesn't want to be an adventurer. Like the, yeah. I just want to stay home and be safe and do my thing. Like the, yeah. you know, the lattes, and Legends is very much like that. Well, uh, I was literally thinking, this is a romance, Lattes and Legends. And uh, uh, someone in chat just mentioned that the author was inspired by Chuck Tingle. So I it mean, certainly is one of those things that the tongue-in-cheekness actually delights me so much. Yes. And that's what I enjoyed about it. Yeah. And if you're, I mean, Chuck Tingle, God bless him. We should read a Chuck Tingle. Oh, give me some, cool. give me like months to get over this one. But also, I will say <sighs> that... Um, it was really fun having um, the dynamic between her and this demon guy, and he was so sweet, and he had all the tropes of those yeah. sort of hunky, but she never, it's like she called him out on all the nasty, toxic stuff that's in the genre, and I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, no, it's just, it was really good. Who was your favorite character? Oh. Well, I mean, I love the main character, for sure. I loved her friends. Her dad's a great, I mean... I loved when, like, I mean, there's going to be spoilers, by the way. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I, I read the book and then come back. Yeah, come but back. Come back. This will be, be saved on YouTube so you can watch later if you want. But mm-hmm. um, I I just liked, I think I just liked her. I think she was my favorite. Yeah. Main Though I do love the idea of a, of a faulty goddess, you know, like of a, a god. I like that. Goddesses. That was a really twitch twitch. Yeah, I've yeah, actually gotten three like books. Pol- yeah, it's like politicians, right? It's like they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know this in real life. They're supposed to be virtuous. They're supposed to be leaders. But then you look behind the, you know, the curtain and they're like, I'm a hot mess or they're just a bunch of liars. And I loved that aspect of this book. I like the, oh, we're now, we're now pirates. I like that aspect of the book. I know. Going, going, going. And it's just when you thought, oh, she's done. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. We have a big ass final battle at the end, but we're going to do all this other stuff. I like the fact that it was kind of like how you train your dragon kind of thing where it's like, yeah. you think dragons, you think demons are bad, but they're not. It's 
that's something I loved on Buffy and Angel, especially especially was the demon karaoke uh, bar mm-hmm. because then you you know the whole it it flips that whole trope on its head of evil's not really that evil they're just misunderstood or mm-hmm. sometimes evil people are the people that are supposed to be heroes like I love well that that's a real I I get a lot of free books in the mail and, <clears throat> and just in the last month I've gotten three that are coming out in the next three or four months about. Somebody getting transported to a world or being in a world and becoming the bad guy and having fun instead. And I think yeah. of like, wow, why are there four books coming out just like this? I'm like, I, I want to read. I mean, I, I'll read it. I, I As I write stuff, so I'm in the middle of writing a comic right now uh, for when we were young. It's a, it's a queer friendly comic. That's a, it's cool. a charity project for the Trevor Project. So it's, it's mm-hmm. basically an anthology comic. And I wanted to do uh, the craft meets Jawbreaker, meets Heathers, but also make it positive. So it's like a girl, a bunch of girls that like come together in a Midwest high school that are in a, they're starting a coven. They're gay. So there's no like gay clubs for kids. There's no, like it is now where that you can mm-hmm. have like a gay, you know, a gay club. So it's set in the nineties when there is none in the Midwest. That was way, way. Yeah. 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 So it's more like for protection that they're together, but they, they, they basically, it's very pro you know, find your, find your family kind of thing. And yeah. one of the girls is like depicted as this mean girl, but she's actually not a mean girl. She just has retching, uh, resting witch face <laughs> as we call it. And I kept thinking about that. There's a lot of people in books and comics that you think that are depicted evil by the main character until you get to know them. I think that's a commonality in a lot of books, but especially with evil people, when you think of evil villains, a lot of them think they're the hero of the story. They don't think everybody, every, nobody's like, I'm going to be evil today. Everybody's doing things they think. Yeah. But if you own it, if you own it, you own it. That's fine. But I do think most villains don't think they're the villains. And I think that's what makes them captivating characters. So in this book, you know, you do have a lot of tropes. You do have a villainous, you know, goddess situation, but Mm -hmm. you also have demons that you think, You know, if you were raised in that world, you probably were raised to believe they were all evil. And then you find out they're not. That's No, it was cool. cool. I mean, listen, it was a some, and I'm sure that as the the series goes on, I mean, obviously the werewolf in, in, that was part of her group now has a romance. And then there was a snake guy. How does that, I want to read that one just to see how does that operate? Me too. Where? That's how I was. I mean, you know this. About Wait, me. I'm that's looking how... up snake penis right now. I'm so sorry. I just am looking oh, it up. Oh, that's see... a Google. That's a Google search. That's so. Where be does it come? Your algorithm is going to get so excited, Felicia. <laughs> oh God! Ew! Ew! It Maybe. comes out, and there's a couple of them. Oh God! Yeah, that's um. Mm-hmm. That's oh clutch, no! Clutch the pearls. Clutch the pearls. <laughs> Ew! They come out of like a slit or something. Oh God! Oh God! Why didn't no. Felice, why didn't we warn all the chat room warned you all of them all of them warned you <laughs> wait wasn't there a superhero that was part snake or am I thinking Hydra and that was not great because of Hydra I don't and Marvel no but I guess I don't know I guess so that's what the snake guy I mean, the ha- that the, the he's a snake from the waist down so it just has a fold that it goes now I don't want to read this book I don't know maybe it's a surprise penis maybe I. I uh, I don't know. But here's the thing. Like, I, you know me, I, during our other book club, I would purposely pick Monster Erotica to make you guys try to figure out how the sex happened and taken by T-Rex, which by the way, that review is online in our, in our uh, channel uh, (laughs) of me explaining how the sex worked with a dinosaur puppet and an action figure of death from Sandman trying to like show the logistics, the physics of it was crazy and not comfortable uh yeah don't have sex with the t-rex they might have tiny arms but everything else is huge so you don't want to do that as a human as a human so i just uh you know monster sex is always like oh is that how that works that's interesting usually it's like magic makes it better i guess yeah i guess magic is the lube that i'm still i'm still i'm sorry i just have an uncomfortable place in my mind for what i just saw okay let's change let's change it let's change it what's the funniest thing in the book that you read that you're like oh boy a lot of laugh out loud moments in this there book. are there was one point she was talking about nachos and like it was very yeah. funny that yeah. i th- and also uh, i just i mean she was really funny and i there were a lot she was super horny all, the whole time like she of was course. like yeah. into it and i really liked that there was the whole yeah. thing in the swamp area where they tried to th- and then that she had to like get in the swampy water and all of that and 
Anyway, that was a tr- kind of, I like that sequence a lot. And I just, uh, you know, the deus ex machina at the end where he's like, I'm just going to do a spell around you and you'll never be harmed. I'm like, great. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. That's kind of cool. I would do it too. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I'm down. That's good foreplay right there. Like that's, uh, thanks. But also I yeah. like that he's like, oh yeah, we're getting married. It was like, oh yeah. no, I knew from the minute I smelled you, which is, that's an yeah. interesting, I guess that's kind of pheromony, right? Like, Listen. Uh, okay, I read two things, guys, about pheromones, which you're going to be attra- you're attracted to somebody with pheromones that are complimentary to you. But mm. if you get a nose job, that changes your pheromones. B, if you're on the pill, it changes your pheromones. Yeah, your pill changes. When I went off the pill, suddenly lumberjacks and uh, women that looked like um, Rosie O'Donnell were hot to me, <laughs> which was not. Yeah, I went butch across the board when wow. I went off the yeah. pill. <laughs> Because normally I would date, you know, your Dita Von T's wannabe girls, or I would date dudes that look like every goth boy in every goth movie you've mm-hmm, ever mm-hmm. seen that are very breakable, very, you know, flexible, very uh, not buff, not mm-hmm. muscular. And then I went off the pill and suddenly it was butch across the board. I'm like, oh, okay. But then I was like, yeah, but I went off the pill really late. And like, because yeah. I was still using it as like, cheap hum- hormone replacement therapy uh so it was like oh i could have does this mean i could have been married to the person i was supposed to be married to like e- a- ages ago if i wasn't on the pill but then i would have had yeah. like 10, 20 kids or something like i just i think the but, trade-off for me is okay i didn't have listen everything that you did up until now is exactly what you should have been doing all right i mean i'm a good auntie i'm a very good friend to all my friends that have kids like i feel like i have old i don't need to be old woman in the shoe to fulfill whatever life quest i've got going on and also marriage was never really in the cards for me because i always date people that are uh I, you know tend to not be around so like <laughs> i just, i mean not that they're fictional just that they're on tour a lot or they're yeah. just not commitment type people because i'm not a commitment type person. So I, I, uh, yeah, but when I, I love romance, like I still believe in romance. I'm still a, you know, I still am one of those people that believes in love and believes in romance and believes in, you know, flirty flirt and believes in dating and, you mm-hmm. know, connecting with human beings as a whole. But, uh, the marriage thing of, Hey, now we're married. That was, I mean, it was cute, but it was also like, I don't know. I think I would have been, but wait, like, don't I get a say? Like it feels mm-hmm, a little, mm-hmm. Little old school knight yeah. in shiny armor stuff, which I don't like. So yeah, I don't, I don't love that stuff. But um, they did go on a major quest together, and they did survive, and they did save each other a lot. So of course, I mean, yeah, and it was there. very simplistic the way that they got in and out of the you know the four chalices. Yeah, there was I mean, I, it's it was not here. This is not a. It was fine. It was, the plotting was fine, but yeah. it was just plotting to get you from hot 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 scene to hot scene, which is exactly what it needed to be. Yeah, it's a good book also to get lost in because it's not hard to understand. It's not complicated. It's it's kind of like what I call popcorn movies are. Um, you know, it's a popcorn book. You read it. Yeah. You read it because it's fun. You don't read mm-hmm. it to like, you don't have to. It was super quick. Words. It was also a super quick book. I was able to read it like. Which I in, love. Yeah. Which I um, love, you know, some of those fantasy books, they can be like 800 I pages. know. I want to read that new Lee Bardugo book. I the, know, I know. And it's, it looks real. It looks real oh, chunky. I have so many books on my list of, like, you can see the giant piles of books behind me that I still need to read that I'm supposed to be reading. And then, mm-hmm. as I and like, I think you said what the kind of books you like to read. I love horror books, and I am uh, living in an era where I'm spoiled for choice of new horror uh, new YA horror books, and I love all different genres of horror, but also horror comics, horror uh, movies, TV shows, animation, anime, manga. So, like, I'm that's my bread and butter, but I also love nonfiction. So, I love reading books about, like, I'm reading one about a mortician and she's answering a lot of cool uh, questions. I think the name of the book is Do Cats Eat My Eyeballs or something, which is hilarious. Oh, it's a great book. I read that book. It's great. Which I will suggest in one of she's our. She's a YouTuber. She's a YouTuber who got that book deal and I read it when it first came out. And yeah, it's so she's good. Great. She's great. She has a YouTube show that she answers questions because she's a mortician. So, she answers yeah. a lot of interesting questions. But then I also read like history books of about poisons and about you know, um, uh, witches and all that stuff. I read a lot of occult books cause I'm a witchy witchy. And yeah. also I just like just fun stuff. Like I, uh, or not fun stuff. I love 
I love documentaries. So a lot of times documentaries have books that are like, that did you read? I heard, I heard there's an amazing documentary on Max right now about Brandy Melville, which is yes. that yes. I need to re- I need to watch that. Cause everything yeah, I've heard about it is the clothing, horrific. The clothing line, Brandy Melville, which used to just say on their, on their uh, tags, all one size fits all, which is, it's all, if you're, skinny, it's all so small. No, no, no. Girl. It's yeah. like, it sounds like the worst brand with the worst owners, racist, awful people. So I cannot wait to watch that. That's one of the, yeah, I was like, it, I got to make some it, time. It's fast fashion. So like the uh, she, mm-hmm. uh, Sheen uh, documentaries like that. The I love the trucker hat one. Uh, mm. What do you call it? The name of the trucker hat people that were. Oh, I don't know. Was uh, it a good documentary? Yeah, it was on Hulu for a while. And it, mm. it was basically about like, oh, Paris Hilton and Ashton Kutcher made this brand. Like the thing that they, Von Dutch, that's it. Von Dutch. Oh, Von Dutch, yeah. The Von Dutch series. And then there's, um, there's like, a, I mean, there's a ton of really great uh, clothing line type. Uh, Amber, the Abercrombie. Aber, I was called the Amber Crunchy and Fitch. But, Amber you know. Crunchy? I don't even go into that. I mean, yeah, the fast fashion world. I mean, the fact that half the time that they don't even put the returns, they just throw them away. And there's like a desert in Peru that's just full of our cast oh, off no, clothes. Yeah, and it's brand, just. The one that, brand, is it Brandy Madison? What did I just say? Yeah. That yeah. one actually talks about the one that's in Uganda. That's oh. huge. That's huge. And you you see it and you're like, oh my, what the? Because I thought, oh, they just donate it to Goodwill or something. No. No, no. Uh, they literally uh-uh. throw it away. They don't even where's, give it to poor where's people. Where's that it's Aquaman horrible. movie? Where's that Aquaman movie? Because by the way, the very beginning of the first Aquaman, you know, when they put all the trash on the beach. Oh, that movie was so bad. It was so bad. But, well, I liked it because it was so bad it was good. So for yes, me, it turned out It was so bad it was good. I would rather watch Aquaman any day of the week yeah. before watching like um one of those new Batman movies. Well, like it for real. Came in a, or it, even it, it came at uh, a time when all the Marvel movies were a little too dark. They're too heavy yeah. for me. And also it was like I don't want to cry all the time. So going to uh Aquaman, by the way, I think I told you that was the first time I got a valid scary death threat. Because someone didn't like my review because it was it went on CNET, which is CBS, and the FBI and CBS contacted me and they're like, Yeah, there's this guy who's crowdfunding, uh, they want to kill you because of your Aquaman review. <laughs> and I thought I was being punked, and then I was like, I hung up. I'm so sorry. Guy, That's so FBI scary. Guys, yeah, they kept calling, they're like, Yeah, no, this is a legit thing. So we're gonna um we're we're just gonna have someone to you know hang out outside your house. I'm no. like, what? Yeah, That's so, I, was, I mean, listen, been through it, it's not fun. It, it, well, I've been through it many times, but this was the first time that I was like, wait, what? Ugh. Because of Aquaman, I gave a positive review, but I guess there were a couple lines there where I said I was tired of Marvel being a downer. And I guess it was a huge Marvel fan that was in the military or something. And I was like, wait, what? But anyway, I liked the movie because at the very beginning, uh, if you haven't seen it, this isn't a huge spoiler, but like at the very beginning, uh, the people. Oh, he throws all the like, trash. Yeah, that's great. That's like, a great moment. Your trash back humans. And they put all. Yeah, the so trash great. Back. And I kept I thinking great. that's the movie I want to see is them going, oh, and by the way, you don't get to use the ocean anymore because you fucked it up. So bye. I want to see a gritty Captain Planet. OK, starring right. Timothy Chalamet. Oh, Chalamet. Chalamet. How do I call him? Chalamet. Shalala, I will always me. mispronounce his name on purpose because it's fun. He <laughs> always reminds I mean, like, I think he's a great actor, but he, he reminds is. me of a kid who'd be in your scene study class way too confident for himself. Uh, you know what I'm knows, saying? And also French. He knows French fluently. I can't. No, I know. Stop, he's French. He's half I French. I can't stop watching press jackets with him speaking French because he's actually French and it's hot. It's, it's so French. hot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Any guy speaking French, even Timothy Chalamet could be like, oh, oh, hot, hot. Oh, hot. Hot. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, um, I, yeah, so this, uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> it doesn't matter. But what is our next book? Because I want oh, so to get that out of there. I have a selection of choices. So I'm going to. Well, wait, have you read any of them? I want you to read something that you haven't read, but you have some really good choices here. So. Uh, uh, well. Okay. I mean, are well, you, I, you okay, want to so do I something you already not, read? That's fine. I have not read Final Girls. Let's by do that. Riley Sager, which is like a fun, like why it's like a support group for Final Girls, which I love. That's a good book. But I also, but I've read this one, so I'll ask to do this at some point, which is the Just Kids memoir by Patty Smith. Just, okay, that's been out forever, and I I have read it. And then I think the other book I'm reading about con women. That is the history of con women. That's uh, pretty cool. So, uh, but I think maybe I mean I just I didn't want to pick horror because I know you don't like horror, but I think you know. You like girls. I want to tell you. Okay, listen. I went to visit my mother. Okay. 
And I didn't know what to do with her, so I was like, let's go to the movies. She's a huge horror fan, and I agreed to go see Blood Omen, which is the first horror film I've ever seen in a theater, and certainly maybe one of the first horror films I've seen. And I want to tell you... Which one? Bl the, the first Omen. I guess it's the Omen oh, Blood prequel. Omen. Yeah, Blood yeah, Omen, yeah. that's it. Yeah. It was very well done, and I was not scared. It was okay. Oh, I did, good. like, maybe jumped once. But it was very psychologically interesting. I thought the acting was really great. I thought the cinematography was incredible. It was, like, 1970s Italy, so it had a really cool vibe. And I was like, okay. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I liked I it enjoyed a lot. it. I mean, I, I will suggest to I wanted to suggest this movie to you a while ago, but if you send you a max, you should. Or no, no, no. This is on Peacock. Uh, Lisa Frankenstein, I highly recommend. Oh, really yeah, fun. I need to see that. Yeah, it Zelda. It's like Valley Girl. Williams, than, right? Yeah, it's more like, uh, it was uh, uh, our uh, Diablo Cody uh, wrote it, and I love Diablo. I'm trying to get into that L.A. coven. Man, if you know oh my gosh. LA coven, let me Diablo, know. Diablo, I had a meeting with her. She was I was very intimidated because she's just so cool. Oh, she's so cool. And then um, uh, Zelda Williams uh, directed. Robin Who Williams daughter, is incredible. talented, so she directed. The soundtrack's great. There's... Here's the thing. I loved it as a fun popcorn movie, but also it's like, it feels like a Lisa Frank horror film. I think that's the best way to describe it. That's awesome. It's so good. It's so, it's so much yeah, fun I to think, watch. I think horror, you know, maybe I was yeah. like, I'm always associating horror with like Freddy Krueger or like the really bloody, like those I do would never want to watch like Saw or any of that. But like psychological horror or like comedy horror is, you know, I can get into it. It's not something I'm going to be like, yeah, let's do it. But I, I mean, I certainly had a good time. I loved, I just really vibed with this movie. I thought it was really well done. That's an interesting pick though. I would have not picked, I would have picked like, like I said, Lisa Frankenstein or maybe Shaun of the Dead or something for you. I would have. Oh, I mean, Shaun of the Dead one. is one of the best movies I've ever made. No, I, no, no. It, it just got its 25 year anniversary, right? I feel like yeah, I know. I saw that. Well, the, the only reason we went, it was that it was even between that and Dune 2. My mom hadn't seen Dune. And then it was, uh, it was, it, and it was King Kong versus Godzilla. Um, and I decided that it would be more scary for me to see two animals fighting, and I would be more traumatized by that than oh. by an actual horror film with people. hundred oh, percent. To me, Godzilla and King Kong are like kaiju lucha libre. So to me, it's just wrestling. To me, it's just kaiju wrestling, no. uh, which is no. different than bloody sports. Like I, I like I. I to me, it's a buddy movie. I'm probably looking at King Kong and Godzilla differently than most, but I'm a huge Godzilla <laughs> fan, a huge kaiju, kaiju fan. I'm pro Godzilla all the way. I will always be Hedorah is my favorite one, the smog monster. I hope we get a movie mm. of that. I loved Monarch, even though it was crazy over the top, not great sometimes. I love all of the Godzilla stuff, So I, but I don't consider that horror. To me, that's just creature feature, which is, yeah. I, it is a genre of horror, but it's not really, to me, horror is like, stabby stab or it's an occult thing or it's like frank like universal monsters like vampire yeah. werewolf mummy well Dracula. let's watch this final girl thing let's read final girls because that seems like, like i think you would like it yeah it sounds it's, it sounds good yeah and it's and if if you if you don't like it then i'll know better next time but i have so fine. many books that i mean look i mean girl that's not even all my bookcases so it's like i got a lot it's so beautiful really beautiful choices uh for our book club so um but hopefully you guys will like it I think I, I want to say one shout out to chat. Ms. Psychosis says my skin is always dewy and beautiful. Thank you. I'm really no, into my skin care. I don't know if you know this, but maybe you should do a beauty tutorial on TikTok or something. I, I, you know, I should. I don't really use that. I, the, the products I use are not very expensive. Um, but I honestly say, I will say right now, hmm. if I eat wheat, my skin dries out really badly. And the more I avoid wheat... Um, yeah. Okay, I'll do the skincare routine. I'll do it. I'll do it. My skincare routine's crazy stupid. Your skin been, looks really good too. But I've been using the same skincare since like junior high. It's like Noxzema. It's, if it works, it works, man. Breeze. Like I'm using stuff from like the 80s. So like Noxzema cold cream and then Sea Breeze for toner and then like baby oil to take off the eye makeup and then coconut oil for moisturizer. That's it. That's all I yeah. do. So I don't know if that's doing it or what. Listen, it's enough. Let me just tell you, uh, all the other stuff is just getting your money well it's, yeah it's too expensive and also i did fall down that like makeup tutorial rabbit hole yeah thing. it's okay. so easy it's so easy yeah i, I did too chipotle, i bought the chipotle makeup eyeshadow palette because it was chipotle <laughs> and i thought it was funny but i'm not wearing that i'm not wearing that i think i just bought it because i was like this is hilarious i'm gonna funny. get that and then i got funny. some like lisa frank stuff and then trixie mattel stuff but i was like 
I am not going to wear any of this. And I, and I went on like a nail no. art thing, but look at my nails. I never wear nail polish. I was no, nail polish. no. I went on during COVID. I, I, I was ordering every product and every expensive serum. And I got to tell you, I got rid of all that and my skin got better. So yeah, I'll do go it. figure, right? Go figure. That's, that's the thing about the beauty industry. They get you, they get you, but they get you. And then, you know, you go through phases and yep, hopefully exactly. you learn and that's, but also it's like, uh, makeup is fun. And I think I, Watching drag queens make me like makeup again. So like I started yeah. having fun because drag queens were doing it. So I was like, well, if they're doing it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> anyway. All right, you guys. So we'll see you next uh, next month. We will post a time. Usually it's one month, but you know, um, we'll see. It's, it's erratic, just like the rest of my life. And we will see you online and on the Discord for the book club. And I will be back soon to do some streaming. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye.